Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Duns and Dragons. And I want to talk about Umbrasil, the ancient black dragon from Legends of Vox Machina Season 2, which is the best Duns and Dragons story of 2023. Brought to you straight from a D&D canon um, author, uh, Matthew Mercer, uh, who is the uh, author of Call of the Netherdeep and uh, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, and is the author of the entire canon Dungeons and Dragons um, canon setting, which is Exandria, which is where all everything that's happening in Legends of Vox Machina 1 and Legends of Vox Machina 2 happen. They all happen in the canon D&D setting of Exandria. All right. So, um, so basically, I want to talk about Umbrasil, but I want to talk about Umbrasil for, in the context of what's happening in the 2023 Manic Panic, which is um, the uh, anti D&D banners, um, the anti D&D partisans coming against the D&D partisans for the attempt to change the OGL 1.0. Okay, and this is uh, this is truly a historical point in time. And I want to talk about some of the dangers around this. And I want to use Umbrasil. Uh, I want to use the wisdom and the knowledge and the awesome clarity that is presented by Matthew Mercer in Umbrasil to illustrate exactly what's happening and the dangers of what's happening right now under the 2023 Manic Panic. All right, let's get into this. All right, so let's talk about Umbrasil. So first of all, let's talk about this, you know, oh, by the way, spoilers for Legends of Vox Machina Season 1 and 2 in this content. So Umbrasil, is, we get to see Umbrasil, and Umbrasil destroys the King City uh, in Exandria, absolutely tears it to the ground, right? And, and uh, Umbrasil helps the Chroma Conclave. Now, who are the Chroma Conclave? The Chroma Conclave are Thordak and Raishan and Umbrasil and Vorugal and Brimsythe, who is now dead, right? And actually, the reason the Chromoclave is are coming to destroy the king's city and actually cause the death of literally the king, cause the death of hundreds, if not over a thousand different Exandrian um, citizens, is because Vox Machina, not deciding whether they were heroes or villains, decided to end the life of a, of a blue ancient dragon. We don't really know right now if that was the right decision, because... Like, it seemed like a great... I was like, oh, ancient blue dragon, let's kill it, right? But but actually, what's really been fascinating, and, and boy, oh boy, man, the energy of Gary Gagax is, is carried straight through the Matthew Mercer because everything that D&D ever said about dragons is right here. Excuse me. All right, so so basically, this ancient blue dragon... You, like, I think a lot, of, a lot of player characters, and we get it, the name of the game is Dungeons & Dragons, right? These player characters want to kill dragons. But, like, I read Fizzman's Treasury of Dragons last year. But that was a fantastic book. That was a really, really good book. Um, wait a second. Fizzman's didn't come out in 2022, did it? It must have come out in 2021. Or I think it came out in 2021. All right, so Fizzman's Treasury of Dragons was an absolute... Um, that was a banger D&D canon hardback. Right, put it right next to Matthew Mercer's banger D&D canon hardbacks. He's got two of them. All right, so um, because he's a D&D canon hardback author, and he's in the stable of Hasbro, right? Like, and if we need to know where he stands in all this, we know because he literally writes for for Hasbro, and he's got a book too, right? So he's gonna be writing for Hasbro again, right? Like, so I love I love there's this debate about who is is uh, uh, <laughs> there's this debate is, is Matthew Mercer gonna leave D&D? He's literally under contract. He still owes a book. Like, like, he's not making his own game because he's got, he already owes Wizards of the Coast a book, right? It's absolutely incredible, right? And frankly, I think he loves D&D. And, and, and I think he may be one of the stalwart remnant, you know, like, so. But, but there's a debate. There's a debate on what's happening. And he is Hollywood. He's definitely one of these people who's going to sit right on the fence, right? Like, so we'll see what happens. But at this point, actually, I think he's... Next to the fence, looking oh, and the, he's on the D and D side of the fence, right? Like, because for a whole lot of reasons, right? And actually, I think he's on the short list to be the next design lead. That's a whole discussion. But all right, let's keep moving here. Sorry, didn't mean to digress. All right, so so basically, so Vox Machina, they, like one of the things I lo- I love this show, man. I'm so I'm having so much fun with this show. 
Vox Machina is responsible for 100 to 1,000 deaths, and it's not debatable. Like, they straight wrecked one of the members of the Chroma Conclave, and you best believe you kill a dragon who's in a dragon group, that dragon group is going to show up, and they're going to tear down every city you are in. Right? Like, like that's, that's the way they roll. That's what happens, right? So, really, really fascinating what's happening here. And um, so Umbrasil comes in, and Umbrasil is an ancient black dragon, okay? And Umbrasil, the hope devourer, Umbrasil, the hope devourer, Umbrasil, the hope devourer, takes to uh, the skies and then just starts raining like pools of acid onto people and just straight destroys people left and right, just absolutely uh, murders them in the streets, like, just like, you know, and, and lets them boil in the acid that is produced from his stomach and, and is more than enough to cut through rock and certainly your bone and flesh, right? And it's pretty astounding, like, how powerful he is, right? So Umbrasil, the hope devourer, is incredibly powerful, but he's a follower. And that's where we are, people. Let's talk about the 2023 manic panic. So what is happening right now, Right? So one of the things that I think I really need you to understand is that this is an incredibly important moment in the history of Dungeons and Dragons, and there's really something special uh, about defending Dungeons and Dragons at this time, right? I know all you good time gals and all you good time guys have been in the mix, and when it was fun to play Dungeons and Dragons, and when Dungeons and Dragons was just an easy invitation, right? And you could say, "Hey, would you like to play in my Dungeons and Dragons game this week?" And you didn't know that immediately. You'd be, are you one of those disgusting supporters of a greedy corporation that hails capitalism and wants to make over $1 billion a year? You greediest capitalist, get out of my face. I'm not coming to your Dungeons and Dragons game. I give you castigation. I give you contempt. I give you judgment. And I will give those to you till the day I, till the day I am no longer here. Right? That's Dungeons and Dragons today. Right? It's not good. It's not for you good time guys and you good time gals. I know you had fun when it was easy. Guess what? We're back. 1983, 2023. Ain't nothing changed but the names. Persecutor, persecuted. We're back. Right? It's hard. Right? There's meaning here. Right? And and my comments are filled with defenders who are doing exactly what the evangelical Christians did in 1983 and saying, we're not persecuting you. We're helping you. You're not smart enough to decide what you buy, own, read, run, watch. Listen to our boycott. Listen to us tell you that you should never buy a D&D book. Listen to us tell you the games that you should play other than D&D. I see you, Sly Flourish. I see how quickly you abandoned what made you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Right? I see how quickly your love for D&D turned to spurn. I see it. Right? I see all of you out there. Good time gals. Good time guys. Right? here when it was fun, now gone when it's hard, right? And here's the problem, okay? Sly Flourish is an umbersol. I'm going to explain it to you. Sly Flourish is an umbersol, okay? Who's the Thordak? We don't know yet. The Thordak is there. The Thordak is the champion, right? And actually, there's a race to be Thordak right now in the anti-D&D partisan group, right? What are they? They are members of the OGL 1.0 creators. They are members of the Orc. They are the open role-playing game creatives. They are members of the uh, of the OSR, the old school rules, right? 